Hey there, we are guides from Prague, Czech Republic, and this is one of our favorite pups. But somebody just recently left a nasty review complaining about the fact that the waiter simply asked them, you want a beer? The waiter brought the beer, and then once the person was finished, they brought another beer, and this guy was complaining about it. What is he talking about? That's the best thing. Once you're finished with your beer, they bring another one. Uh, so for me, from the perspective of a Czech European, that's a good sign. For an American, that may be kind of weird or rude. So today we want to talk about cultural differences between our country, our city, and United States of America. First of all, you may be surprised what the beer looks like. Well, we have a video dedicated only to that. And second, when I walked in, I didn't look at a beer menu or something that may be quite common in the United States where you have different beers on tap. Most pubs and restaurants in Czech Republic will have one brewery on tap in the pub. So that's why you can walk in and just say, I'll have one. So I kind of like that. You walk into a pub and you don't have a million choices. You just say one. In US, not only you have a choice of beers that are on tap, quite often there's 5, 10, 20, but also they will ask you, do you want draft or bottle? What kind of question is that? The reason you go to a pub is to get beer on tap, to get draft beer. If you want bottled beer, you go to a supermarket. So for us, that's a big cultural difference that quite often we don't understand. Now a beer here costs 55 crowns, let's call that $2.50 to round it up. If you go to a stadium, to a sports event here in Prague, it's gonna cost around $3. Well, nothing like that in US. If you go to a pub, it may cost five, six dollars, and you go to a stadium, and it can cost 10, 15, even 20 dollars. Honza hates it. Whenever he goes to a sports event, he's always shocked with the price of the beer. I myself, when I travel to US, I usually don't go to uh, sports events, but I like amusement parks. And just recently, I visited Universal Studios. It was the most expensive beer I ever had in my life. $15. I could not believe it. Now, I understand that going to amusement park, you don't go there for beer, you go there for the rides, but still $15? Dude, it was insane. Why did I do that? Also, fun fact, I did not take a picture of the beer, but I did take a picture of the receipt. Now, the price of the beer, as I said at the amusement park, was $15, but I was asked to pay more than $16. Why? It said 15. Well, tax was not included. <laughs> What is this about? We go to a place, and I'm not only talking restaurants, but any store shop, and the price tag is the final price you pay. It says 55 here, it's gonna cost 55. They include the tax. Why don't you do that in US? It's just sad. I mean, imagine me, I'm 11 years old, I have my first dollar ever, and I walk into a dollar store, looking forward to buy something for a dollar. I pick up the item, go to the register, uh, $1.50, I'm like, what? It's a dollar store, everything costs a dollar, not dollar store plus tax. Now let's switch from drinks to food. In any place, you can get some food, right? Uh, mostly you pick something from the menu and no further questions will be asked. Well, in US, quite often they will ask you how you want to customize, do you want bacon, do you want that cheese, do you want this cheese, do you want this or that and that. It gets quite confusing for us. And you can imagine me being 11 years old in US, in New Jersey, first walking to a restaurant, ordering a burger, very much looking forward to it. And they asked me, how do you want your burger done? I said, I don't know, very well done, thinking that they would make it completely. Yeah, you can imagine what happened. They brought this black piece of meat that was unedible. And all my friends had a laugh about it. Now, to be fair, if you go to a restaurant in Prague nowadays uh, and you will have a burger, they will ask you how you want it done. But once again, the, the fact that you can customize anything at a restaurant in US is very uncommon for us here. So if you come to a pub or a restaurant in Czech Republic, don't expect that you can customize every single item on the menu. That's why there's a menu with things that you pick from. I really hope we didn't lose our subscribers from United States. We love you guys. Uh, so to uh, say something that we consider to be amazing in US that we don't have here is water. Free water at a restaurant, at a bar, anywhere. You sit down at a table and in US you get a glass of water. Never happens in the Czech Republic ever. Not only that, if you ask for tap water, quite often they will say, no, 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 we don't serve tap water. 
and you will get a tiny little bottle of water that you will pay for two, three, four dollars. It's ridiculous. I know a restaurant where I go to, and I will always say, can I get uh, tap water? And they're like, no, we can't do that. We can only sell you a bottle. And I quite often say, I'll pay you the same price that I'll pay for the bottle for tap water. Like, no, we can't do that. Crazy. Why did we cut to here? Where well, we are here to thanks to our partner, which is Surfshark VPN. We're actually on the border with Germany, also many culture differences between them and us. But if you don't want any differences while traveling, but mainly while surfing the web, you can use Surfshark VPN because those differences will be gone. Let's say that you're traveling between US and Czech Republic and you like to watch some films that are only available in US and you come to Czech Republic and those films may be gone. Well, you can open Surfshark VPN on your mobile device, on your iPad, on your computer, and you can pretend that the device is not in Czech Republic, but still in US and therefore you can continue watching whatever content there is that may be restricted only to one country. Uh, the example between Czech and US is only one but you can put your device virtually anywhere around the world. Me and Honza use Surfshark VPN. If you want to try it out, you can do so. Uh, use our code, which is Honest Guide, and you'll get 83% off in three months completely for free. The link is below the video in the description. And now let's cut from the border with Germany to the pub where I'm describing the differences between US and Czech Republic. Now let's talk about service in restaurants and pubs because that may be a bit of a shock for you when you come to Prague. Uh, yes, quite often it is rude and not polite at all. That's also a huge difference for us when we go to US and um, a waitress will come to our table and she will introduce herself and she will smile and she will maybe recommend something from the menu. That would never happen here. I mean, it's changing, don't get me wrong. Uh, service is getting better. But if you go to like a local place, a dive bar, which I would consider this place to be, quite often they'd be grumpy and it takes a long time for them to get to know you. And after maybe a 20th visit, they will share a little smile with you. Not like in US. First time visitor, oh, I love seeing coming you to our restaurant. My name is Wendy. Can I take your order? Hi, Wendy. Speaking of Wendy, when I was first called darling or honey in a restaurant in US, I was like, she really loves me. She just called me darling. I like that. I mean, I, I like the bartender here, but he never calls me darling. I, I, let's, let's make it stay that way, okay? We're tough guys. Even though the two of us consider the service at places in the United States very good and very nice and very polite, there is one thing that we consider to be very rude. And that is, you're finishing your meal or maybe you're halfway through and suddenly a bill lands on your table. What is that? Are you kicking me out? That would never happen here. Any business, restaurant, pub, coffee place tries to keep you in the place as long as possible. You're done with your meal, they'll offer you a dessert. You're done with your dessert, they will offer you coffee. You're done with your coffee, maybe you want to start over and have another appetizer. In other words, they want to keep you in as long as possible. You have to ask for the bill. In US, very often, you're halfway through, here's your bill. I'm like, well, maybe I want another something. No, 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 the bill is already on the table. Just weird. Speaking of the bill, let's dive into tipping. And that can create some big issues because that's a big cultural difference. In US, quite often we get asked, do you want to tip 15, 18, 20, 25%? which for us is like, whoa, that's a lot. A quarter of the bill just tips uh, because it's a tip-based country or tip-based business. In Czech, that used to be very, very different. I mean, my dad would only round up the bill to the next higher number. If the bill was 99, he would round it up to 100. I believe most of our dads and mothers still do that. Nowadays, it's changing even here and tipping goes from 10% higher if you're satisfied with the service. If the service is really bad, some people will simply not tip. If that would happen in US that you would not leave a single cent on a tip, I've experienced people running out the restaurant and be like, what happened? What did we do wrong? Like, why did you not tip? So tipping is very, very different. And I'm curious what you will uh, say about that in the comments. Where, whatever country you're from, I want to read what's the average tipping in your country. Now this cultural difference is not only huge, but is, I consider it to be evil. And that is packaging. 
and garbage in general. I'm not talking about if you go to a place where it's a takeout or you go to a fast food. Yes, they put it in a paper bag, either if you're in US or here. But I'm talking about if you go to a restaurant and they create so much garbage, so much waste, even though you're at a restaurant. Quick example. Mostly if you get a drink at a bar in the US, they put a napkin under it. So it soaks the moist that's running under it. Well, that's for one use only. Afterwards, they will throw away the napkin. How about they use coasters? Because you can reuse the coaster. And that's just one very simple example. Another one is if you order a ketchup at this place, they will bring it either a bottle, some places in the US do that too, or they put it in a um, ceramic cup that they clean afterwards. Not that they grab 20 ketchups and throw them next to your burger. Or even in McDonald's in Czech Republic, you pay for every single tiny packaging of any sauce, any ketchup. So you think about if you want one or two. In US, uh, yeah, can I get some ketchup? Here you go, here's a million ketchups in tiny little bags. No, don't do that. I mean, you guys are going all Michael Bay packaging. Like, hey, yeah, that's a plastic bag. Let's put it in a paper bag and let's put more packaging and pack it up. You want it to go? Yeah, let's pack it up more. Whew. In the me meanwhile, in Europe, yeah, let's, let's get rid of plastic straws. They really destroy the universe. There's gonna be one hell of a discussion under this video. I absolutely love you guys from US and I love going to US, just so you know, we both do. Please don't cancel my ESTA. Now let's drop the beer for a minute and let's talk about coffee and coffee culture differences between USA and Europe. Triggered already? Well, you'll get triggered more. Yes, in Europe, we do not consider this to be a cup of coffee. That's a gallon of coffee. If it's more than a gallon, it's not coffee. This is a cup of coffee. By the way, shocker, they have a cup of coffee in this pup. Uh, it's served in a ceramic cup. It's this size. You have a plate under it. It makes that little noise when you put it down. You sometimes even get a spoon with it so you can mix your little espresso. And this is how you drink it. Not a gallon. Doesn't fit in your car so you can drive and sip on your little coffee soup throughout the day. Big difference, big shocker for us when we go to places in US and they simply don't serve something like this. Hold your horses. I know that coffee culture in the US is changing depending on which state you live in, if you live in a city and so on, but still mostly people think this is coffee and you cannot get this. It's sad for us Europeans. Can I get a cup of coffee? You want venti grande, grande XL, grande XXXXL. Like the Italians drink it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now this next cultural difference may sound weird, but I believe it should be addressed. And that is restrooms and toilet sizes uh, in restaurants and pubs. And I'm not talking about the actual seat size, but I'm talking about you have a big pub and there's one toilet. There's like one restroom for the entire pub where there's like hundreds of people. And the stalls where you can like sit to do number two are very like see-through. Like there's no privacy. Like there's no door at the bottom. Like if somebody peeks, they can see you. Yeah, it's kind of strange. And girls talk about that a lot. Both our girls talk about it, how like it's kind of weird that people can't really uh, see you. So that's a big difference. If there's a big pub here, it has many restrooms, many toilets, and it can, you know, uh, do the business people need and accommodate many people at the same time. And of course, the ones we mentioned are not the only cultural differences between our continents. There's many more. We can talk about uh, different units. We can talk about different forms of transportation, how we move around cities and countries, how big are our cars and your cars, and many more topics. So let us know in the comments if you want us to cover more topics. And while you're there, please don't be mad at us. This was not made to insult you, only to give you perspectives on our culture habits and your cultural habits that we experience when we go over to your lovely continent that we love to visit, but sometimes we're just like, huh, that's weird. We're the honest dudes from Prague. That dude's name is Honza. My name is Janek. We go by The Honest Guide, our channel full of content. So if you're planning to come to Prague, Europe, uh, check out our videos. We do scams, we show you beers, we show you restaurants, coffee places, and cultural differences. I'll see you next week, Sunday. And a Czech word at the end, I'm going to teach you, we always teach Czech words, is uh, how to say cultural differences. Kulturní rozdíly. 
kulturní rozdíly, culture differences, or if you want to say one cultural difference, it's kulturní rozdíl. Rozdíl difference, kulturní cultural 